Hello and welcome to GPTV on the most incredible, the most fabulous, the most exciting Tuesday, the 12th of May. My name is Philip Kingston. And I'm Gary Peel. And I love the way you're seeing Tuesday, Phil. It's a very, very positive way well, to, you know, to see a Tuesday. You know, who couldn't be more positive after Premier Dan the Man oh, Andrews yeah. Dan the Man. released us from captivity, yep. set us out there into the wild world of open for inspections and auctions. We are back, Gary. It's game on. It looks the like boom it. is back back on i'm calling it here on gptv you know it's funny you say that phil because i've got an article and thank you to simon one of our viewers uh simon from new york phil i'm gonna say really? simon, simon oh yeah new new york. York. um wow. and sent me an article here which is printed off which was in the wall street journal philip a publication that you might have some interest well, in I, given I, your worldly ways well, and your Gary, you, um, you know that i've actually had the uh, pleasure of having a meeting yep. at the wall street journal head offices yep. on the avenue of the america uh in the news court building with robert Thompson, no less. Yes, Philip. And between you and me, uh, with my interest in best bets and yours in the Wall Street Journal, we've got a very broad coverage of lots of things. Hey, by the way, uh, we'll get to this first, and then we'll talk about horses in a second. But um, look at this. Why, why home prices are rising during the pandemic? So isn't it interesting, Philip, that they're saying over there in America uh, that this pandemic is showing an increase in prices? And, and, and it's kind of, we talked about the Mexican standoff, Phil. Uh, and then we talked a little bit about now what's going on in over there. If you read the article, is that uh, a buyer is saying, "I'm not buying," and the vent, "I'm not buying. I'm taking my time." And the vendors are going, "Well, we'll see your inaction and raise you because we're not selling." So now everybody is basically doing nothing. So the the stock levels have all reduced yes. so much, Philip. The properties come back so much that buyers who thought, "Ha ha, I need to buy, but I'm not going to." have really got nothing to choose. So that is the classic from. Mexican standoff, Gary, and yep. it's, it goes to show, doesn't it, doesn't it, that in the areas that we work, yeah. which are, you know, you'd call them upmarket, yes, blue, areas. Che yeah, blue affluent chip, areas. affluent yep. areas, uh, when the vendors that don't have to sell just yep. withdraw their properties from the market. So you have this constant equilibrium at play, yep. Gary. Less properties, less buyers, but evenly matched. And, and I, I think that's why we haven't seen prices correct. We've seen prices pretty stable, Gary. And I also thought about this, mm. Phil. I think that property is one of those things that the government does come to the rescue. They do put a, they do put the, uh, you know, the uh, colourful underpants outside the outfit and everything. Phil, and go, yeah, you know, superheroes, the, super, the Superman, the outfit, Superman, the Superman outfit, outfit, yeah, under, underpants, under, underpants, yeah. Phil. But you know, it's property is one of those things that constantly gets propped up. Uh, there's whether it's stamp duty or whether it's. Uh, um, are you, are you, know, you suggesting some that sort of, it's artificially propped well, up? Well, I don't know if it's artificially propped up. Maybe you could say that, but I do believe that there's a lot to lose when property plummets or drops. And I also believe, Philip, that when it comes to banking and governments, there's a lot of rah 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 support for real estate. And that's why I think property doesn't really particularly go down fast or by much. Gary, the uh, the home is the castle, as, course, yeah. as yeah. the well-known, uh, wonderful, wonderful movie, which I must re castle, re yeah. re watch the oh, castle. Oh, it's great. I watched but, it but not, the home not is, long ago. The, the home is every person's castle. It is. Uh, and there's no question, I think, that politicians have got an acute nose for understanding yep. that yeah, property anything important. that plays with property prices in the negative uh, is a massive drain on the psychology of the nation because this is the nation where the backyard dream yep. is alive and but it's, well. But it's more than that, Phil, because when property's going well, then people are building, they're renovating, they're no constructing, question. there's stamp duty coming through, governments can build roads, governments can, can, can Gary, police people who drive like you, for example. It's called, there's all the, sorts it's of that called stuff. the wealth effect, Gary. That's when it, Phil. people's houses are going up in value, the wealth effect kicks in and they're more likely to spend. They so are. there it is, Economics 101 lesson, viewers. Good. Stay tuned for exciting breakthroughs in the way we're able to take comments complex issues, break them down for every person. Hey Phil, uh, we've got a bit of a Hey Phil moment, so put up the Hey Phil logo there. Um, hey Phil, I think we upset a few people with our, <laughs> with our heading last week, uh, making real estate great again. Uh, we've got a couple of people, uh, Mark, you know, who said, um, uh, you know, keep safe and was very polite. Yep. Uh, basically said, very unimpressed with the tagline. Uh, I mean, it's amazing, isn't it, that tagline? And I, I, if you, for those who watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, it was an interesting episode where Larry David wanted to avoid having lunch with somebody. Then he did go out for lunch and he wore a Trump hat saying, Make me. And, that episode. and the person just ran away and everyone cleared out the restaurant. So I think there's a little bit of unpopularity there, I feel. Then somebody else um, said, even if we're being 
uh, facetious and making X great again is a putting off slogan, Philip, and did not like it at all. It's Very fiery it's viewers we've got. Whoa! When you when you yep. go with slight, something that's slightly controversial, yeah, it does bring out the anger Ooh, in yeah. some people. Yeah, it and, I've, the, and I've got uh, to indeed. tell you that this we don't, is, mi we don't the, mind that, the, by the look, way, do viewers, we? Viewers, yeah. this is a show <laughs> that exactly is right. informative, yep. but at the same time, it's lighthearted and exactly um, right. there's a there's a, uh, a lovely, lovely Australian expression, Gary, which yeah. we're known know. to employ, which is taking the piss. Gary. And by the way, Kerry Ann Kennelly, I don't know, uh, you know Kerry Ann Kennelly. Yeah, she wrote an article the other day, which I read, which was very interesting about political correctness has gone too far and this is a country where we make light of situations. We laugh at our misfortunes and I think that's a wonderful thing to do because better to laugh, as my father once said, better to laugh at your misfortunes than cry at them, Philip. Yep. And I think that that's a, that wasn't an uncensored because he was a sensitive man, but I think <laughs> it's a very, very good thing to just make light and humour because having, life's short. Having, having said that, life's Gary, short. the humour on this show is yeah. both intellectual oh, and, is it? and... and <laughs> I never thought so. And I doubt not it. every viewer is mm. going to capture the theme and the understanding and the of spirit it, uh, of what and we the mean. spirit of what we we're come, talking we about. Come in, we come as friends in good faith. But as you did Don't say after you were reading me some of the comments last yeah. week, you did say clearly and yeah. cleverly, I yeah. don't mind saying, you said to me, look, if we're not upsetting a few people, exactly right. then the show's not achieving exactly right. what it's well, set Well, if you think achieve. back, and this is part of the Australian psyche, I don't know if you remember, Philip, because you only had two stations growing up in Cootamundra, which is RV and AMV, and the a ABC. Well, we only had one station. One station, there was the one, ABC. There were two available, but There's only one was allowed to so be So when you weren't watching Mr Squiggle or Play School or the, uh, the ABC News, Philip, you might have switched over to the other commercial station. And Graham Kennedy, in his day, yes. would come on with advertising, for example, shoes, and he would say, I don't know why anyone wants these shoes. These shoes are crap. They're terrible shoes. They make my feet. And of course, the next day, everybody went out and bought those shoes. Yep. And yep. Uh, that's just part of our psyche as Australians. So, it is. so it is. the message is lighten up. We are only having fun. We're making light of things because life's too short and let's just enjoy it. I think somebody, yep. and it's incumbent upon us, somebody's got to take yep. the pulse of the nation. And yep. clearly, this is a show yeah. that does take the pulse of the yeah. nation. Speaking of the pulse of the nation, we are back open for inspections, hey. auctions. Uh, having said that, with some Fairly strict rules oh, around yes, well, this. Yeah. Ten groups. Kind of all the neighbours just hanging sorry, out. Ten people. Yep. And obviously, viewers, the way we're going to conduct that, uh, I'm presuming, Gary, because yep. we haven't actually rehearsed no, this. We haven't but rehearsed I'm assuming it will be one buyer group at a time mm. coming through the property. Uh, so that we'll strictly control our open for inspections and of course uh, if and when we find out more information don't take this as gospel viewers but this is done on the fly uh, and auctions right. uh, 10 people so yep. we're, we're assuming you know if you think that most people come to an auction yep. as a couple of some form so if you've got a, if you've got a vendor of four you've got the auctioneer you've got three sales people no, no, no. one it, person it, can come it, it, it oh, said no, 10 people plus those that are uh, directly involved, yeah. associated involved with yep. the auction. So clearly that would we'll be the, the auctioneer, yeah. that, would be the that would be the person that's penciling for the yep. auctioneer, that would be the third person ready to handle the documentation, yep. that would be the vendor, the vendor's partner. Yeah. So we're, we're already up, I mean, yeah. there's going to be 300 people. <laughs> exactly. There's going to be 300 people. Now don't say that, auction. Philip, that's not the spirit. As not the, the spirit. Dan Andrews, won't, he, he won't stand for that, Philip. No. And Scott Morrison will say, stop it! As he did when people were hoarding Philip, because that's what he says every now and then. Hey, um, anyway, we're going to find out. Anyway, uh, it's good news. Are you, are you, are you prepared news. for auctions this weekend? Like, let, I mean, I know uh, you're Gary, ready, but I was born prepared. It's been, it's, it when I like, came out, yeah. my mother handed me to, uh, the, the doctor. The doctor <laughs> handed the baby me yeah, yeah. to my mother after she slapped yeah, after he slapped yeah, you yeah, on the backside yeah. and the face. <laughs> and I was, oh, just, was, just, I was face. just ready to go. Yeah. Exactly, and you had a gavel in I your hand. I said to mum, "It's game on. Let's get out there." Exactly right. The gavel. That's it, uh, Phil. Um, so this weekend we may have some auctions, but it's, it's been a long. It feels like it's been a long time does, since that weekend routine. You know, I'm, I'm used to getting up on Saturday, bang, getting out there, making it happen. You with know what? You. It feels for me like yeah. the second week of February yeah. because second week of February we've stopped our auctions yeah. in the second, the second last weekend of December, and we don't kick them off until the second week or third weekend of yeah. February. So this feels like I've just had the summer break. Yeah. Except I didn't go away. No, that's I right. was stuck at home. And it's been cold. Um, <laughs> it's been cold. <laughs> it wasn't really a break at all. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, these are quiet months. I mean, we're booking for June, July. They are historically quiet historically months. Historically the quietest but month of the year. But things do get sold. Oh, there has absolutely. been a trickle of sales, Philip. There's been offers. Some properties have been very popular, in fact. Um, and some properties have sold under competition, which is what's been going on in America as well, Philip, if you look at that article from the Wall Street Journal. Hey, Phil, um, we won't build another Hey Phil logo up, but is the handshake 
gone forever? Oh, That's another well, question I want to ask. Well, is the handshake gone? I is reckon, it finished? I reckon, you know, uh, they say President Trump yeah. has always had a phobia about germs yeah. and he's never what, wanted, what, what, he's he never said, wanted he said to that, shake he said that in the first place. He said, he, he said that, Philip, and yeah. I know people hate us talking about it, but we're going to. Uh, he said, he said um, I never liked shaking hands. I wouldn't have gotten to office if I had to do it. I never liked it anyway, ever. No, I never. In um, fact, no one... No one like shaking hands less than me. But you know, the other thing yeah. too, Gary, is I'm a kisser. I don't yeah. mind. I like, I like the whole European view of kissing people. Hello, yeah. even men, women, I don't know, babies, children, um, yeah. convict, <laughs> convict, some, some convicted <laughs> criminals. There's some um, creepiness I, I, about no, that. No, no, I do. I've always loved that. Yeah, I, no. I, I'm a tactile. What about the people that I'm, receive the kiss from you? Do you uh, reckon well, they've always As I'm that? leaning in, they're leaning out. Yeah, but, exactly. Right. <laughs> and going further, further away. I've seen it at auction. But I'm very quick. Over I'm very quick, Gary. I, I get know. in there before they've had the chance. But uh, I reckon the whole way we... I mean, who's going to be the first person yeah. to lean in and, and kiss somebody hello? Yeah, it's well, I, it's, it's funny because be. my niece came over the other day. Am I allowed to say that? Have I broken a law? I'm not sure. Maybe well, I you have. have. Yeah. Okay, well, she came over for a, uh, for a business meeting. Phil. That's right. That's <laughs> so right. my niece came over the other day. And my natural reaction at the door was to give her a kiss hello. And she yeah. backed off like I was Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, it was very awkward, Phil. And she was, bro- she was I, right. I, I, was I, I don't blame her. Wrong. I yeah. don't blame her. I was wrong. Um, anyway, Phil, let's, let's move on. Let's talk about where the market's... Where the market hey, before we do... Phil, we've got yeah, one more go on. general business item. Uh, yeah. Horses. I feel like I've let down the, the, the GPTV viewers, Phil, yep. because Order of Command, a horse I've tipped many times on the program, has won its last two races, including the Wangoom Handicap, the time-honoured Wangoom Handicap, the new market of the bush, they what call it. What is the Wangoom The Wangoom Handicap is the feature sprint race in the Warnable Carnival, Philip. It's why, time why is it called Wangoom? Uh, well, I, 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 that's a good question. I'm not Viewers, sure of the history. You know what we'll Wangoom find out. stands It's probably a lake or some, you know, some, some uh, maybe it's the name of a champion Aboriginal person, Philip, where there was called the Wangoom Tribe or something. I don't know, Philip, but it won the Wangoom Handicap, which was very exciting and a record-carrying weight of 62 kilograms. It goes to Adelaide. This week, Philip, to race on the good one. Are you tipping it on GPTV? I'm tipping it as a reasonably good place bet, Philip. That's pretty cautious. A good good place place bet. It runs against the best sprinters in Australia now in a group one race. You've finally got a horse that's actually capable of of showing up and and giving it a good shot. It's won its eighth race, Philip. So uh, it's it's won its last eight races. No, no, it's won eight races. Eight races. races. So not its last eight. Good? Are you kidding? Like, uh, unbelievable. It's so good, it's racing in the good wood. Okay. Handicap for I want to anyway, talk property, Gary. I um, think the viewers so are a little bit tired of the last two months of guff. No, I think they like the guff. I don't think the property is the least interesting thing on this show. No, let's talk property, Okay, Gary. let's talk property, Philip. Let's talk about what's, 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 what's been going on, what's there. been sold. Stay with order of command and maybe Lakes Folly on Wednesday. Got a small share I'm getting that. serious here. Let's put the glasses um, on, Gary. Phil, Give me a property, I'll talk about it. Uh, well, we've sold in Rosebury Grove, Philip. We sold that. Uh, the price is not uh, is not undisclosed. Philip sold for um, $546,000, Philip, in Rosebury Grove, which was good. Interestingly, um, Rosebury Grove, Carnegie. Yeah. Um, interestingly, Glen Huntley, it, Phil. Carnegie, Glen Huntley. No, no, those just two, Glen Huntley. Those two suburbs no, no, rub just up Huntley. against each other. Yeah, they do rub uh, up that's against been, each other. That, that market's been pretty active right it's through been good, the whole You're COVID right. story. Uh, a lot of activity there in that yeah. kind of 400 to 900 You're range. right. There's two other sales yep, here. Yep. Like, so, one in Glen Huntley so, Road. Um, whilst whilst uh, the property market was doing it tough, not at our Carnegie office, they no. were buzzing out and about. Uh-huh. Making sales very left, right, and busy, centre. Phil. Very yeah. busy people down there. Lots of dynamic operators. Uh, Oakley Road. We sold a property also in Carnegie. Uh, Philip, we've sold a property in um, Victoria Street. Now it sold well above expectation. We're expecting somewhere around the high sixes, maybe into the low sevens. Well, it sold for way more than that. Tell me why that is, Gary. Because I know that the yeah. open, the the numbers of inquiry on that property were off, off the charts. Off Phil. The charts. They were off the charts. Look, this is an Let's unrenovated, get that up on screen as unrenovated we talk. single level villa. People want to have their own stamp, Philip, Elston Week, Victoria Street, hot spot right across the road from Elwood, near the Ripley shopping villa? strip. Uh, 70s Villa, Philip, this is a ripper. Viewers, we've called, uh, it, well we called this a couple of years ago. We called yeah. the fact that the 70s villas would be the buy of this decade. Yeah. There's no question buyers love it because they're easy to renovate yeah. uh, and they're, you're getting your own land. They're single storey, getting your own land, generally with a bit of a courtyard garden at the back. They generally have a single lock-up garage and they're generally in good streets. So whether you're buying one of those in Elstonwick or whether you're buying one in Carnegie or Bentley, look out for those 60s, 70s, and even into the early 80s villa unit complexes, sometimes six on a block, sometimes eight. Phil, let's talk a bit about what is going on with offerings out there. And talking about wonderful properties that we've you know called out, I love the semi 
semi-detached home. Yes. One of a pair. Phil, yes. we've got one that is outstanding that Joel Sir is involved in Island Avenue. I want to talk a bit about this because yes. it's a great looking home, Philip. See, you did it's a video all been tour renovated. there, Gary. Oh, that's a, a, that's a new one for oh, you, isn't they it? they roll me out every now and then, yeah, Phil. You know, I get a little bit of a say. Um, you know, that, you down, a, just like the auctions, Phil. Sometimes I get a look in and, you know, you step aside or you're sick or you just say, look, go, you, you have did, one. You did a reasonable job on that, Gary. Thanks, Phil. you've got to lighten up a bit, you know. i get in trouble on this show being too light. You've got to relax into that. Make it more as though yeah. you're just talking to a friend as opposed to performing for the camera. Just, yeah, okay. Just that's good. Up. I will. My shoulders are a bit stiff. You're yeah, right. I yeah, get a bit yeah. stiff for those uh, videos. A little I mean, bit of a public. I think you're very good at them. A little bit of a public speaking tip for yep. those that are watching that might have to make a speech or or do some level of public speaking. One of the most important elements is yep. when you stand up. Just yeah. actually feel your shoulders because you'll generally find you're kind of up like that. And yeah. by just simply rolling the shoulders and taking a moment will make you relax and much calmer before you start. Um, if you need some public speaking tips, you're more than welcome to give me a call. I will be running a course in these quiet times. Another little side hustle I've got going. Is that through the business yeah. or personally? Not sure yet. Not sure. Through the business. <laughs> so um, I've got to say though, uh, your actually your status there, I'm going to throw you now a compliment, which I don't often throw. Throw me a compliment. I'm going to throw you, you know, your status in terms of presenting videos, yes. uh, real estate videos, is quite legendary. You know, when we're in Sydney, people said you're the benchmark a number of yep. people said when they go online they see your videos of homes uh, even though every one of them will say uh, it's wonderful to be in the kitchen it's the epicenter of every home and this one's no exception yeah, which I don't always ones. say the epicenter the it's epicenter. the epicenter of family living, family yeah. living. Uh, yeah. or anyway, the heart of every home is it's the, the heart kitchen, of every yeah. home is the kitchen yeah. and this one is a beauty anyway Phil um, you are a little bit of the uh, doyen at uh, the, the benchmark doyen. of uh, oh. videos real Thanks, estate Gary. videos I'll Thank give you that Thank yeah you. Um, anyway, let's move on. Have a look at some of Phil's videos if you've got nothing else to do and how much Netflix can you watch anyway. So let's do it. Phil, we've got four, uh, three auctions booked for this weekend. Uh, we're going to be at 43 Bellaclava Road at that fantastic place. Now, you know, again, we don't really know what's going on. If they do Gary, go to auction, come and have a look at them. Beautiful development, beautiful room. We've got one ground floor apartment with a courtyard left. Yep. Uh, we then also have a beautiful two bedroom apartment up on the first level. Uh, this is a brand new building designed by Amnon Weber Architects. Uh, just the most fabulous job. Uh, only a few limited opportunities left in that building. Uh, come along, have a look and buy one. That's a good idea, Phil. Uh, we do have scheduled to go to auction uh, on the 17th of the 5th, Philip, which is this weekend. Uh, we have this wonderful home in Emma Street. Caulfield South, Philip, take us through this one. Gary, what a beautiful home. You've got the period charm, but you've got all of the modern luxuries in this home. Four or five bedrooms, Gary, three magnificent bathrooms, plenty of off-street car parking. You're getting the whole deal there. That's land, a gorgeous home. And Emma Street is a wonderful, wonderful position because you can walk to the tram, Gary. You can walk to Princess Park. You can walk to Fresh. You can walk to Mr. Brightside. You can walk to Delish. The list of wonderful opportunities is on your doorstep, let alone the Boran Park, Gary which unfortunately our children were a little bit too old to take there yeah. when that opened. But if you've never seen the Boran Park on the corner of Glen Huntley Road and Boran it's Road, it is incredible. It's particularly in summer, Gary, when all of the ice cream vans are, uh, are out right. and the kids are running through the, the, the fountains. Just a joy of family activity. Um, Phil, what about the coffee van? Going to bring it back now? Or we not? are going to bring the coffee vans back, Gary. The I'm not people. sure we not sure well, we can, really. Good. No, I, well, you can. You can, yeah. Well, what, we have one coffee each and that's well, it. Well, it'll be... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can diversify, Philip, sell some alcohol, some it'll whip, be, Mr. It'll Whippy, be interesting. Good put point, a siren good on the point roof. On that, viewers, should we bring the coffee vans back, yes or not? Is that the spirit of things? But certainly, yeah, why wouldn't you bring the coffee van back? Because early. Dan Andrews said all associated said, things yep. to do with the auction. I'm not sure it would be within yep. the spirit of his announcement. Uh, anyway, Emma Street, Philip, that's the one that's booked for auction. I mean, it, we've almost become so used to not working at auctions on the weekend. It's a very strange feeling. Do you think you're annoying people in your home or giving them pleasure? What there is no question that the novelty of having Philip Kingston home yeah. on the weekends has yeah. long worn <laughs> I off. Think so. I think so. I think they'll be tapping on the back, pushing me out the door, <laughs> saying, you go have a great weekend yeah, of auctions, yeah. Dad. I found, yeah. I, I found Irene on Sunday was washing my car in preparation <laughs> for me <laughs> leaving. Getting ready, checking the oil, making sure everything was in yeah, order. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. engine on, <laughs> just, just right. getting it ready. Yeah, the gates yeah, are yeah, open. No pressure. No, not at all. Uh, I think so. I'm just wondering how that's working out for people. Uh, in fact, I've had a couple of calls from people who are you know, now parting ways uh, through this COVID period, which is interesting also, Philip. Well, there's um, no question to put a lot of pressure so on a lot be, 
a lot yeah. of relationships. Um, has, and I must say, though, Gary, I did stay yeah. home all Sunday on Mother's Day. Oh, did you go? It was yeah. the first Mother's Day that yeah. I've ever had with uh, the family. Yeah. So if you think about it, we're always out. Mother's yeah. Day is a busy day for us. Well, did that day seem like it lasted <laughs> forever? <laughs> and if that was to you, imagine what it was like to the rest of the family. Yeah, I mean, by the yeah. time we got up and had breakfast together, yeah. and then we had lunch together, and then we actually played a game of cards together. Oh, did you? Oh, the day. Cards. It felt like... The Kingston's aren't card players. Well, I'm very not, surprised. Not. Are you going to come to the card games <laughs> we have now? There's five it's, people we can All have. I can yeah. say is that that day felt yeah. like a week. Is that right? With what? due respect, of course, to my beautiful <laughs> yeah, and, family. And to a month for them. Tell me, uh, what cards did you play? Played Oi Vey. Oh, is that right? Oi yeah. Vey. Well, there you go. I never knew you could. You, knew, you don't know how to play that. Do you know what? I do now. Wow. Well, there you go. You can come to the weekly game, Phil. Uh, it finish, starts at 10.30, finishes about 2. Are you in? <laughs> do you in? Or what? A game with no money, by the way. Same crowd for 25 years, but we're happy to have you in Incredible. if you want to come and join. Incredible. Can, you, can newbies come, can they? Yeah, newbies can come, but only five people at the moment, Phil, because Dan Andrews. And five people can play that game, which is good. It's interesting that yeah. you can have five people to yeah. your house yep. for dinner. Uh, and, and socially, and, and, and the friends, and family the, and friends. And the Premier did say that, look, this is not an excuse to ha just have dinner parties, right? Yeah. Uh, and fair comment. Yeah. But five's an interesting number. Why five, not six or four? I can four? tell you why, Philip, because, because, and I didn't want to say this, but we, we have a card game, as you know, once a week, yes. right? It starts at 10.30, finishes about two or three, and yep. I'm usually in bed by four. That is, and by the way, when I come home, everyone's awake. That's how crazy the house appears. Anyway, um, and it takes five people to play that game. Right. Uh, got called Oh Lord. It's got a few different names. Uh, Weave or Oh Lord, or um, there's another rude name that it's got as well, which I won't say. But yeah. Um, and FYB. FYB. If I, yeah. If I remember and it's, correctly. And it's the prize yeah. uh, viewers, if you can yes. send in what FYB does stand exactly for, right, yeah. there is a prize of two tickets to a cinema that you cannot go to. <laughs> exactly That's right. That's why we're giving them and, away. Um, Buy the yeah, truckload. But buddy's the last word. <laughs> Uh, in the FYB and Philip five people can play so someone in the school has said to Dan look four people will leave us can you just have five people so he's given us the, our card game which is fantastic um, just speaking of, of this whole uh, winding down of the virus yep. and we're not there yet I mean no. this may take until sometime next year or until they come up with a vaccine although yep. uh, as a very good doctor friend of mine did say to me over the weekend this they may never have a va uh, vaccine for this no. and if you think about it, they haven't cured the common cold let no. alone the amount of billions of dollars that's yep. gone into the research of that. But um, if you think about it, Gary, I've just, just lost your mind. Lost yeah. my train of that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. I love it when that happens. Fantastic. Uh, well, there's a bit of dementia. But that was a through. great lead in. It was a great idea. And you know what's more sad is I was thinking about oh, say something I, I before do know, and I, I forgot. Do. It's come back. It's come back to me. When will you <laughs> take your next, like, let's just say it's over tomorrow. Yeah. When are you getting on a plane next? The next day. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, that. I've already spoken to Hannah. I can't tell you, you know, you know I'm married to a sun goddess yeah. uh, worshipper. Yeah. She loves sun uh, and, and she just like cannot wait to go right. anywhere north. Um, yeah. Although she won't drive. Right. Doesn't matter how far. I said, let's yeah. hop in the car. No, yeah. doesn't like driving. But she's ready for some sun. So, yeah. so you jump on a plane tomorrow and well, knowing that there's 300 people. Like what are, what are you going to be doing? There's 300 people on the plane. It'll right? be Port Douglas And somebody sneezes. Be, uh, somebody sneezes and you're on the tarmac. Are yeah. you getting off the plane? Well, firstly, I'd say bless you, Philip. Yeah. Because uh, that, that's polite. That's good manners. Secondly, I hope it would be into their um, into their arm here. Um, but do you know, I reckon if somebody sneezes on that yeah. plane, you're done. Yeah. You reckon so? <laughs> really? No, the person that sneezes. Oh, like yeah, that, yeah, that's right. People will be wanting know, to yeah, kill that person. If you, brought, if you pulled out a gun or had a bomb, it would be no problem, less, no problem, less problem. No problem. You Somebody sneeze or blow your nose, yeah. all the best. Yeah. Uh, you're right, Phil. Well, I don't, I'm not that comfortable about the concept of a plane, uh, getting on a plane. I've got to say that. But I am very comfortable with the concept of just jumping in a car and just driving up north, Phil. But um, I'm not so sure. There's an wife, argument Phil. for now flying business class mm. or first class, Gary, because there's no question in a plane, yeah. when you sneeze, yeah. Right, it all all goes back. Even though you're sneezing towards the front of the plane, yeah, it all goes backwards. How do you know that? Because that's the whole concept of being in first class and business class. <laughs> is that right? It's is all that, about the sneezing. Doesn't matter yeah. what happens up the front. Yeah. it all ends up the back. Okay, so if you're in the last row, you're just copying it all. Yeah. Don't, you? <laughs> don't ever take the last <laughs> and, row and by in the a plane. And that's where the food gets delivered to as well, isn't it? Except yeah. if you're sitting in the front, it gets delivered. Well, now it's all making sense. Phil, that's a big wrap. We've gone on for too long on GPTV. There's lots going on, Philip. Uh, we're starting to come back. It's an exciting time, and uh, I'm not going to say we're making real estate great again because I got in trouble, but we are doing the best with what we have got to work with in this 
incredibly unique time that we're in, Phil. Viewers, you will find that this show will make a lot more sense moving forward. Mm. Uh, the frivolity no, will start no, to leave the show a no, little bit more serious element. Yeah. More real estate well, we will, will be happening yeah. and unfolding, but it has been a very quiet time, but uh, this is the weekend where it all gets more serious. We've loved, hopefully, entertaining you through the heart and soul of this difficult time. We've been there for you. We will always be there for you. I'm Philip Kingston. Have a fantastic week. I'm Gary Peer. We'll see you next time.